Hello there and thanks for coming back to my channel. So today is Wednesday, February 8th and here in Slovenia it is Francais per Sharon Day. Um, it's national holiday and so we're going to do a little bit of history fun um, and this short video. I call everything a short video no matter how many minutes it's running. Okay, so I am outside. It is minus five degrees Celsius and the wind's blowing and there's some humidity, but I like my little background. I like the little tree. Tiny little tree right there. See the little tree? Yeah. Oh, it's all okay. Back to recording. The wind blew my phone off the stand, of course, and now Best time to be outside is when there's a little bit of wind and it's starting to snowflake a little bit. So a little bit of snow, no big deal. Okay, so like I said, today is Prince April Sharon Day and he was a national Slovenian poet. Well, now he was born, he was alive, he was like, yeah, whatever. He was popular, but not popular in his way. So he was born... Uh, December 3rd, 1800, and here we go, we have a little picture of him on some little blockies, and he's a uh, rather sad looking little block, more or less half the picture. This was an oil painting that was done, and I got all this information from Wikipedia, so you can go and do your additional research you want on your own time, um, because otherwise it just goes on and on and on. Uh... So the holiday itself by the nation was established in 1945. Um, he was a famous Slovenian poet, plus he also studied law at the University of Vienna in Austria. Um, his grammar days when he was a child, he included was a grammar school in Grosupli, which is a, a couple of hills and valleys up the road from here. Um, his parents were well off, his dad was a farmer, and his mom was very well educated uh, as well, and hopefully this phone doesn't flip off again. Uh, at the age of 12, his studies, he moved from grammar school. Now remember, this is early 1800s, so like education was a little bit stronger, so at the age of 12, you're basically in high school kind of thing. Um, so at age 12, he moved from Grosuplia and did his studies at the State Gymnasium and where he studied Latin, Ancient Greek, and German. German was the international common language for business and uh, all those uh, big professions back then. 1821, he enrolled at the University of Vienna Law School. Um, he was there for seven years, so I guess law school is still about the same, uh, if not longer now. Uh, in 1824, um, while he was, I should say, while he was in law school, he also did uh, writing and such, but he also uh, composed quite a few of his famous poems. His first um, popular poems, um, Genre and then in 1825, the Carniola poems were uh, were uh, written. In 1828, uh, after seven years of law school, he returned to Ljubljana, and then he got a job as uh, in an assistant to, to a law firm of Leopold Baumgartner. Um, he tried to be an independent lawyer several years after, but he never succeeded. Four years later, he moved to uh, Klagenfurt. Uh, within less than a year, he had no luck of, uh, of opening up a law firm in Klagenfurt, uh, Austria. Um, so he, re he returned home to Ljubljana. Um, 1833... He met a lady named of Julia Primich. Um, she was the daughter of a wealthy merchant, and apparently, the love he had for her never transpired uh, back from her to him. Um, as it is, uh, I quote, unfulfilled love of his life. So, 
it only gets better. <laughs> the British drama just gets better with the story. Um, so while he was um, constant heartbreak uh, over this Julia uh, girl, um, in 1834, while he was studying um, and writing his poetry and such, uh, he met other two other romanticists poets and back in the early 1800s everything was romanticism it was the edwardian era when queen princess victoria wasn't even she was just a child um at that time i think if i got my dates i but i'm wrong anywho maybe that's my thing i'm getting all my uh, history mixed up right now um um so we are at 18, the year 1834. He meets other two romanticist poets, uh, Czech poet Karl Heinrich Macha, and then Slovenian born Croatian Stanko Vraz. Now, he has a lot of philosophy discussions with them, and them three get along really well. Um, I should actually say that I didn't realize that. But Cher was born in the town of Verba, uh, up on the Gorenska, close to the uh, Austrian border. So it's just a very vague description of up north. And I did have a, oh, I did have a map, but all the papers blew everything away. So let's go ahead. Um, oh. Here we go from Wikipedia. This is the lady that he fell in love with, but um, she never returned the same kind of affection that he had for her. So that was uh, Julia, um, uh, Julia Primitz. Um, so the town of Verba up on the Gorenska is, I had to kind of hard cop, uh, handwrite the thing so verba is up here this map of slovenia and this is the little dot is verba the village that uh france per sharon comes from um uh back to the history lesson in 1836, Prisharan realized that his love for Julia wasn't happening, and Julia actually was married to another man the previous year, so <laughs> the story just gets better. You can call it drama, or you can just call it, I think it would be a really good uh, dramatic piece um, for a play of some sort. The same year, 1836, Prisharan meets Anna Yeloshek in a permanent relationship. They have three children together. He supports Anna financially and treats her as his rightful mate. But this is the good part, because this is where the British drama comes in. He ha also had several other love affairs at the same time. And so, him coming from a very Catholic family, and most of Slovenians were Catholic at the time, um, my question is, what would his uncles, who were Roman Catholic priests, think of uh, this situation that his nephew was totally, like, basically scandalous? It's like a British documentary. This is great. I know, who know history could be so much fun. Uh, he did, and then that time frame, uh, a lot of traveling through the Carniola, especially to Lake Flandes, where he got a lot of his inspiration for his poetry later on. Uh, in 1846, he was allowed to open up his own law firm and he moved to Karain uh, with his family. Sadly, um, in 1849, less than three years moving to Karain, um, he died there on February 8th in 1849 at the age of 49 years old. So this is as he has become a uh, now known uh, famous national uh, po Slovenian poet um, that 
now he's recognized for his work, of course, when you're alive, <laughs> whatever, but once you're dead, oh, you become more popular once you're dead, um, and on his deathbed, he did confess that he never forgot Julia, and so maybe he just went through a life of broken uh, heartache and whatever else, so, Ooh. oh, it's cold. Minus five, the wind's blowing, and but the view is awesome. There's a little tree that I was telling you about. You know, little trees about yay big. When you stand, it's like 50 feet tall. So some of his famous works, uh, A Farewell to Youth, a Slov Slovenian ballad, The Waterman, but which kind of translates as I kind of was reading on it. It kind of translates into uh, something different. Um, during that time that he was, um, his most popular or his most, um, um, how would I want to say, his most famous time that, um, he had his works and his publishings and all of that was from 1830 to 1835. Um, in 1830, a school reconnected with him. Uh, Mati uh, Chop uh, gave Prasharan the additional confidence and enthusiasm that he needed to write these um, poems and these sonnets based on his life and his um, basically theatrical sadness of his love life and everything and the sorrow and the Everything that goes along with such a good, good dra uh, drama, you know. Uh, so those were his most productive years, were from 1830 to 1835. Um, as it's written in Wikipedia, and I quote, inspired by the setbacks of his personal life, unquote. So... You can just go to Wikipedia, you can print off the eight pages of, and do your additional homework because there is so much good stuff um, onto this. And, as I was saying, um, yeah, she kind of, there's, there's a lot more stuff that um, I could just read off, but... You know, if you go to Wikipedia, they've got all the links, and you can just go ahead and click on it. And I noticed that there was, they have 67 languages available for Francais for Sheridan. So you can just click on the language that you want, and you can read all about him. And um, he, oh, how he died. Uh, wasn't from a broken heart. He actually had... Um, liver disease and it was from he was a severe alcoholic and because of all the depression and sadness that he had in his life he started drinking a lot and so uh finally it finally caught up with him and the um liver disease did take over so that is how he officially died as per these pages um, so I hope that this can make it a little fun history lesson, not too hard, not too complicated, um, um, so, oh, the town of Verba, which is, back then was the part of the Habsburgs monarchy, which is correlation today to the direct house of Windsor, because then it was the Edwardian era, if I've got the right king in place, so it was the Edwardian ed, uh, era, and which translates to the current House of Windsors that we know today and love in London. Uh, the current uh, monarchy uh, and monarch family that is in London. Um, so I thought that was kind of fun when I kind of figured out that that Habsburg was the original is now the House of Windsor. So there's another little piece of uh, royal uh, history and from uh, history that you can go and pick and choose your historical pieces.
um, so if you have any comments so uh, if you have any comments go ahead and put them in the link below and comments or questions if there are any British Slovenes, South African Slovenes, Australian Slovenes, Canadian Slovenes, anywhere there are any Slovenes who study for sharing, how do you guys study for sharing in school? Um, and I'm sure because every Slovene community, Slovenian community around the world that has a Slovenian language program at one point uh, at least learns the very basics about Sharon, French say for Sharon. So, um, give me your comments. I picked Britain, I picked South Africa, I picked Australia because those I always think be fun places to visit. <laughs> Would love to go to Britain. <laughs> Any Slovenes in Britain? Um, put a comment in the description below. Um, make sure you, uh, here we go. Like, share, and oh, 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 dang, that's dark. Like, share, and scrub, subscribe, and hit the little bell, ding, ding, for notifications when the next video is coming up. So, I think that it, that uh, concludes our little history lesson today. So, I kind of had fun doing this. Uh, it was just a lot of additional writing, but you know what it's like when you're studying something. So, uh, one thing. Oh. Okay, I just kind of lost. No, I'm going to have to pause this for a minute. Okay, so I did found uh, did find the famous poem that uh, Bruce Sharon wrote about his hometown of Verba. And luckily, I found it translated into English. Now, I'm just going to somehow zoom this up so maybe you guys can see it. And... Let's see if I can find the link below. Um, oh, bug. Anywho, uh, it was translated by, uh, thank you to Alistair uh, McKinnon for translating it into English, so I didn't have to. So, makes it a little bit easier, makes this video go a little bit quicker. Um, I can, oh, lost a glove, so cold, I'm starting to lose. <laughs> Trying to warm up my fingers a little bit. <clears throat> so I will go ahead and I'll just go ahead and read the poem. Over by Happy Village, my old home. My father's cottage stands there to this day. The lure of learning of learning beckoned me away, its serpent wiles enticing me to roam. Else had I ever known that heart's joy. Sweet promise could become a poison drought. Isn't it very poetic? Not known myself of self-belief bereaf, tossed into an eternal tempest like a toy, a dowry riches never could surpass, a faithful heart, a hand that's made for work, would have come with a chosen country last. Serenely onward would have sailed my bark, my house from fire, my corn from hailstorm lost, safeguarded by my neighbors near St. Mark. Now, St. Mark is, uh, Sveti Marko is the church that is up the hill from, um, from uh, Prashard's uh, birth house. And yes, the church still stands there because I did uh, research it and there is a photograph of it. So, and you can always go and do your own homework. Um, and what am I supposed to do? It's blowing wind and my papers are flying everywhere. So, and I just had some teeth, uh, tooth work done yesterday. So, shout out to, uh, to my dentist, Dr. Kiara Helpman over in Terzine. So, if you need a dentist, she is absolutely gentle and wonderful. Uh, just a uh, complete um, friendly person. Uh, an excellent uh, dentist. So if you need a dentist, um, two thumbs up for Kiara Hauptmann. And so Dr. Uh, Kiara Hauptmann, dentist in Terzin, uh, industry, uh, the industrial zone area. So Sisu uh, Zobers Drauniko is uh, the name of the clinic. So I'll go ahead and I'll put a link uh, in the description below. Still learning all these little... For a bit. So, 
Make sure you, yeah, oh, whatever. Like, subscribe, and share, and hit the notification button, ding, ding, uh, for when new videos come out. Okay, I'm going to go in and warm up. Have a great day. Bye.